Hello everyone, Darcy Bono here. In this video, we're going to look at painting the all-important blood splatters that are so frequently seen throughout the Warhammer universe, and the ones that look particularly awesome on the World Eaters. Now this recipe, I use this on pretty much any model that I want to look brutal. I use this on Angron himself, um, but it looks particularly good on light armor just because it creates such um, gruesome contrast. So this is a very simple process. It's just two paints one paintbrush, and a sponge. So very easy, very fun. Let's get going. Okay, so this might sound a little scary to some people, but you're going to want to have your miniature totally finished before you start this process, and that's including any weathering or battle damage. Now, we're not going to cover how to do battle damage in this video. That's just not what it's about, but I'll include some quick and easy tutorials in the video description for in case you're unfamiliar with that process. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is to create your blood mixture by mixing a 2 to 1 ratio of Citadel's Flesh Terrors Red and Sigor Brown. And these are both contrast paints. So in order to control this better, you're going to add one drop of contrast medium to this mixture, as well as one drop right next to the mixture, because you're going to be pulling from that to create glazes later. As you'll see, this entire process of making blood on our miniatures is just going to be this blood mixture in varying degrees of opacity and with varying degrees of Sigor Brown. So it doesn't get any more complicated than this. Before we apply this though, make sure to get nothing but contrast medium on your brush. Dip it directly in the contrast medium you've put on your palette and you're going to coat the surface of where you want the blood to go initially coat it entirely in the contrast medium. The reason we're doing this is because it will cause the subsequent layer of blood splatter to diffuse on this surface. So we've got our, our shin guard here basically covered in contrast medium. I'm now going into my blood mixture with my sponge and applying it directly to that. And this will prevent it from drying because what we're going to do next is feather it out. We don't want that blood to look so saturated straight out the gate. We want it to look a little more faded because this is going to give us our foundation that we're going to build additional layers on to get that added realism instead of just something that looks like a paint splatter. So I'm just using a brush that's got contrast medium on it to pull that blood around. And then you can go in with a dry sponge and just kind of lightly pat the edges. That'll give it a little less of a linear pattern. It'll give it a little bit more of a, of a faded blood effect rather than just say, hey, this is where, <laughs> this is where I stopped using my brush. And honestly, this is it for step one. Um, very, very simple. I do recommend working in patches like this. Like for example, I've just done his shin because it's imperative to keep that blood uh, moving while it's still wet. If you try and do this unmasked, like if you if you coat the whole body, paint is gonna start drying and then when you go to push it around, it's gonna come up in patches and not have the same effect. And just so you can see the same process on a different part of the body, I'm repeating the exact same steps. I've sponged on my blood mixture, I'm now taking my contrast medium on my brush and I'm just lightly feathering it away from that initial point of blood splatter. So we've got the foundation down. This next portion is just going to be kind of seasoning to taste, <laughs> depending on how much blood you want on your miniature. The lighter your touch, the more like speckled it's going to look. As you can see here, I'm just taking my blood mixture and lightly patting it on the miniature. I, I haven't done the fade because I want this to look more like basically a spray versus he's been slogging through blood and then blood's accumulated on that as well. So this this is the same process, it just depends on how much you want at this point. So again, you can see me here feathering it out, creating a little bit more of a fade but still retaining those splatters on his face and his torso. And again, the lighter your touch, the less paint on your sponge, you're going to end up with a more sprayed, a more flecked look with your blood that looks fantastic over top of the faded foundation we've applied. And just because I don't want my blood pattern to look too linear, I am going to apply just a tiny bit over here on these further surfaces that are farther away from the axe. And I am going to grunge them up just a little bit more uh, in just a moment. 
and don't be afraid when you're sponging on the blood this lightly. Uh, I'm going to show you what to do in case you put on too much in an area that you don't want that much blood to be. Watch this. See that big triangle of blood there? I should have tested my pattern better before applying it. Just immediately take your contrast medium on your brush and feather it out. Ta-da! There's, there's really no messing up here. Now for surfaces that are less in like the main line of blood spray, but you still want to look like they've come into contact with blood, so like the feet, he's been marching through a bloody battlefield, I'm using just straight Saigor Brown, but as glazed as you can get it basically. There's no particular ratio, just make it really transparent. So similar process from before, after you've applied it, immediately take a dry sponge and just lightly pat the edges so you get more of a fade effect. Now keep in mind, we're working in layers, so once your layers have dried, you can always go add more blood. If you want to add a fresher look, use just straight Flesh Terrors Red like I'm doing here to add more of a This Just Happened blood spray. And then finally, the easiest part is the weapon. You don't need to be so light-handed, you don't need to be so subtle. This is what's causing the blood spray. So take your blood mixture, dab it on there. You can go nuts if you want, uh, because you can always feather it back out again with your contrast medium. Um, so I usually will try and have some of the metal shining through a little bit, just for a little bit of color variation, just so it's not quite too saturated. Uh, but you don't need to be uh, very careful when doing this. All right, here we are at the final step. We're just going to be sponging on some Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss to create a wet surface effect. So you're just gonna lightly sponge this on anywhere that you've applied a fresh blood spray. So the ax, uh, along the hand, anywhere that would have a definite fresh blood on it. And the reason we're using Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss is because it is a red-brown, so you will get the shiny gloss effect, but it will also retain the red vibrancy of the blood. If you use anything else like Agrax Earth Shade Gloss, it's going to dull it and darken it. We want to keep the fresh blood looking bright. You can use Ard Coat or any kind of gloss varnish, but I've found that sponging it on kind of creates too much of a texture because it's a lot denser than a shade coat but it is an option should you not have Reichlin Flesh Shade Gloss. All right, now this guy is looking like a proper bloody world eater. So thanks very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's honestly been one of my favorite ones to do just because it's so gratifyingly gruesome and, and easy. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe as there will be more in the future. And if you really enjoyed this video and feel very generous, make sure to visit my Ko-fi link, which is essentially just a virtual tip jar where the funds go to support the channel and the production of more videos. So thanks very much again for watching. And until we meet again. Happy painting, everyone.